right, I'll have to transition. What can I say? All right, moving on. Um, yeah, again, I still feel OG's laning phase is incredibly strong. Like when I look at their heroes, they combo with each other, and ITB is so static. Like the supports and Ember, that's their entire gameplay. If these heroes don't find kills, it can be incredibly awkward. They're already both teams are smoking up, and this is where ITB they'll they would happily look to get a first blood on, on the Ember or a first blood onto that Morana yeah. to help kind of like celebrate that early timing. But a, a deep wrap around actually from old G. Yep, I mean, both teams going, uh, going going pretty in depth there. I mean, this is just two heroes from ITB walking back towards their rune spot, though. This could be bad if they get caught out. Oh, gee, they're going to see the disruption is there. And, uh, well, this might be a oh, beautiful fear coming out as well from no one. Uh, I mean, very big overwhelming odds, to be fair. But uh, Jibbe will be going down regardless. Who do they get the kill to? Well, Ketra actually going to be taking it for themselves. So that'll be your first blood going the way of old G. Or old Jibby. I, th I feel like for ITB, it was this like weird split they did, right? It was this, they, they they do this deep smoke. I think both teams actually showed us new pathing for the bounty rune spawn, like the deep south wraparound, and then ITB doing this like behind tier one, but Ooh. they kind of split themselves apart. Yeah, it's not over though. They're going for a bit of retribution here, ITB. They're trying to bring down Aramis, but do they have the damage or the lockdown to be able to actually do this? Aramis up the high ground. Ah, he's going to get caught out here though. The blood grenade, the bomb, he will go boom and Aramis goes down for the second kill off the game but something interesting there was a reason to the madness here from the side of ITB and they're actually um censoring out both of the OG ancient camps so I guess they're expecting this Beastmaster's lane to go poorly and Seb's gonna try and retreat back to those ancients which he's not gonna get now is is that the logic there no no I mean I actually didn't catch that but no that's actually really good I think when you see think about Beastmaster, it's always send your boar back because you're not sending your hero to do it. it. It just feels easy, right? You're not losing out on any lane XP. So, yeah, I love the fact that they actually did that. That's pretty pretty heads up. And it's going to be annoying to deward, right? It's not as if these camps are close to each other, like old school jungle, right? If Aramis wants to deward it or Seb does it, they have to look, walk from one ancient camp then all the way to the other side. So, yeah, that is going to be quite a thorn in Beastmaster's side if his lane goes poorly. Yeah. If his lane goes well, then. Ah, well, no Ancients, I'm already crushing the lane, let's take the tower and progress deeper into Radiant Jungle. Yeah, and, you know, 100 gold is, it's, it's a small resource cost in the grand scheme, as uh, Merlin taking some damage here, Kit Track really laying the pert into him, I mean, they're going to trade their lives here, but no one's going to be pretty happy about that one, I would say. Yeah, nice little trade, I mean, the fact that no one got it, he's like, <laughs> cheers boss, thanks. I think, if anything, no one's upset, like, Kit Track, could you have died a little bit earlier, please, so I got that solo XP? <laughs> This is going to be a... I also, I just remembered it's Nande Morflick. I don't forget when he played on uh, One Spa, aka Manasper, hence uh, Thank you. Uh, Nomad's wording. He he crushed on this hero. It was yeah. like his 1v9 hero. Jibbe up in Jibbe. the top lane in some trouble once again. There's going to be another kill going to no one on this. Mohata, not a hero you really want to be giving away this many kills too early on. And this is what I meant during the draft. Like. These lanes are disgusting. Like, if they put yeah. Monkey King here, they picked up a Muerta. Like, these heroes are just killing heroes in this Legion. Legion loves to play more passive lanes. He likes to AFK hit creeps, but when there's Ooh. constant manipulation and damage, it's annoying. Nice save from Aramis down bottom there as Respect tries to go in onto Seb. So, they are trying to lay the hurt on him at the moment. Now they're yeah. utilizing yeah. himself very nicely. This is the... I mean, ITB, they picked their carry. Assuming this was the lane, right? Like they they knew the Beastmaster S combo, and they pick up this Morphling. So in this matchup, Morphling shouldn't really be pushed out. It's more about just hitting the creeps and just scaling. Morphling should be able to mirror the net worth in this lane for sure. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, again, if they don't push out Seb, then they have just watered up these camps for no reason, which is uh, kind of a hundred gold down the drain. So <laughs> kind of pressure to do well down here. Oh, but look at the little boy. He's like, I just want to stack, but there's nothing here. <laughs> What is my okay, purpose has one... to stack the camps? Your purpose is to die. Okay, there's he, he catches the sentry. There we go. All right. And he dewatered. So one down. Nice. Um, there is something we haven't talked about so much yet, and um, that is the mid lane, which is is currently going very, very tops and favored. He has got the counter match, but as my king Seb does drop down in the bottom lane. That's a pretty big deal. ITB able to catch him out. Yeah, I mean. It's close to the tower, and this uh, Morphling, he's never dying in the same now, right? Like, he's got this 14 wand, he's got the Lotus. Wow. And uh, the fact that Beastmaster has his camp unblocked, it's TP back to the lane and just farm what you can, stack what you can, and, and 
play on your dominator timing basically i shouldn't be expecting well, if ulti get a kill bottom then something egregiously wrong has happened in itb's laning so <laughs> oh come on look at that wow he just goes straight back in and uh yeah here we see the kill on the replay poor old man sap getting cut down respect could grab that kill yeah unfortunate arrows potentially if you disrupt the Beastmaster, then you waste a little bit more time, but still. Dead at the top. This lane is... I don't want to look at this lane anymore. It's disgusting. Thank you. Thanks. Let's look at Dobson. <laughs> he doesn't have his Mischief, so... Ooh. Respect. Might have taken a step too far, but no, they're going to be able to get him with the chains. Oh, there's a disruption up from Aramis. Are you joking? He's going to survive through this. Now they look over towards Supreme as well. What a TP in from the Shadow Demon saving the day. That was intense. Yeah, absolutely clutch. And it's why we're seeing, you know, Shadow Demon kind of rise up more in popularity. These cheap spells getting thrown out, the, the need for kills. SD, this disruption spell, it really hurts. And Seb also kind of hurting in the bot lane. Yeah. And you know, this this is a bit of a spicy matchup. Nande has been known to be very, very vocal, you know, in his first uh, series last season. We had a bit of all chatting against the side of uh, Alliance. So if ITV do end up getting a, uh, getting a win here i i think you might have something to say about it oh okay keep note no one tipping jibe again we have to do interviews here boss so i'm just preparing like who tipped who what was the reasoning was it a misclick yeah these are the important things but jibe is taking some serious hits here just from the creeds i mean catch you i can no one take another name up here in the top lane yeah this is Again, like I mentioned, Legion is a very static style of hero. He hates playing against ranged carries. He likes playing against melee carries inside the wave, getting those uh, motor courage procs and just playing on your tanky. This is not a lane you're tanky. Enchantress bullies these heroes with ease. Two points in Impedus. Oh, he is actually going to land it in the end. I mean, that was some uh, interesting targeting going on. But nevertheless, Topson stunned and then his tree's cut. He's stunned even longer. Supreme going to have all the time in the world to cut down the monkey. Meanwhile, down in the bottom lane, Seb goes down again. This is a Nande show down in the bottom lane. But looking at how the rest of these lanes are going, it kind of has to be. Yeah. I love the fact that with Topson and his gameplay, any other mid laner, you'd, I'd already be thinking like, oh, maybe he's like throwing the game. It's going to get a bit awkward. But with Topson, it's like, he's just going to do this over and over again. And I... it's just going to work inevitably, you know? <laughs> <laughs> why Why does Shadow even do a little fist pump whenever he kills people with poison? Yeah, he's just proud of what he's achieved, wouldn't you, fist bump? Clearly. All right, not quite going to land. Very tricky to do with only two levels in the searing chain. So Topson able to uh, dodge out the gank. And didn't jump to a tree this time, so I didn't get caught on the uh, countdown. Yeah. Yeah, this was so weird. Looking, but looking at the replay, so this is Topson's entire reason why he has been successful, right? It's the, he is the mid laner that once he pushes the lane in, he's going past the tower. He's continuing to do these plays, right? And it drags heroes to the mid lane in this scenario. The tower. Didn't do too much, but in other games, we'd be praising him for it, right? But here, it wasn't too great. Just an awkward feed, just like this. Yep, a little one bit of invading going on for the Wisdom Rune there, I believe, but gets caught in process, and uh, yeah, when that magic damage comes through from Respect, it is very painful indeed. Yeah, I'm trying to work out if blocking the the Ancients actually has really helped ITB yet, because so far we've now got a double stack on one Ancient camp and a triple stack on the other one at minute seven. And it's like, realistically, would Old G have stacked too much in the first four minutes? maybe they'd have maybe one more stack to this name so 100 gold to slightly delay the beastmaster's inevitable snack uh snacks i mean they are <laughs> snacks he's gonna eat them up and get real fat but not wrong not wrong um but i don't I, it's i'm on the cusp of trying to like is it worth it is yeah. it not i mean they were ready to make those stacks they were like going for the double ancient stack straight out of the gate um with the boar yeah. and with the uh shadow demon as well there's a bit of brawling happening in the root i mean in the river right now it's kid he's just gonna get blown up immediately arrogant connects onto topson as well he's still got um well at least a boundless strike to play with here but i'm not sure if it's actually Both gonna one. be able to get him out right now in comes the slider fist no mana on supreme makes this very very difficult actually so they're gonna pump the brakes here a little yeah and for all this uh chaos and feeding and damage Look at the fact that Monkey King is still ahead of this Ember Spear, right? Just the, the raw laning aspect of this matchup has given Topson the slight edge. Beastmaster as well in the bot lane. Only 500 gold behind the Morphling after dying, what is it, two times now? So 
Yeah. Oh, gee. I'll stabilize in this game a little bit. And it... Oh, Thompson dead. And it looks that way. They combo <laughs> so on dead. it once again. I mean, this is two support heroes sitting around the middle lane for the past, like, two minutes, pretty much. But yep. they'll bring him down and they might get a tower with it as well. Oh, gee. Do you want to come and make a defense on this? I don't think so. I... I really adore how they like to be up utilizing their supports right now like this is what you need to do like when i see their draft it is ember plus supports they need to break the game they need to do things they need to just progress the map and yeah already take mid tower kill tops a couple times instant smoke up i feel like og they should be aware of this one already kind of posturing a little back they actually use the scan it does turn red yeah. Shouldn't be too surprised as they reveal here. Yeah, and Kitrak is going to be the one to reveal everything. I mean, Set is going on the side. He's going to use a roll here onto Respect. So Kitrak does go down. Can they get the return kill onto Respect? He's managing to get the blast off away, but the damage comes in. No one with a rotation grabbing that kill there. Another one for the Muerta. 4 0 2 right now. Thompson, even considering going for more, but that's brave. Uh, of course. I mean, if there's a fight, Thompson's there. He's just springing onto the back lines. It's like the same player style that I see with no one on his carry Monkey King, uh, in his pubs at least. He'll get to, let's say, Echo Saber. And then suddenly he treats this item as if it's like, I can kill the Ancient now. Like, that's how aggressive he plays with this. And I'm, I'm seeing it with Topson with just one and a half items. But yeah, already ITB. I'm feeling it to be Nade needs to just kind of ignore the chaos that is ensuing and continue to make these farming plays and it's exactly what he's doing. He didn't stick around too long bot, he dodged the mortar rotation as you see the positioning of bot, he moves to top, takes the tower, trades the map split so I think yeah, yeah Nande is doing a really good job at making sure he doesn't fall victim to the classic old G, come find us guys, it's free kills, look how juicy and weak we are they right are now. are looking at no one right now. And his team have just backed away. He went back in for one more wave. Is it going to cost him? I think it might. Ulti comes out, though. They can't get the right clicks off from Nande. And no one is going to be able to just get himself out. Creep tanks the arrow. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the map, uh, Supreme is uh, just kind of chilling, trading some spells with old G. All right, quick trivia. What item do you think Shiro, carry of PSG, mm -hmm. goes after Maelstrom on Muerta? I got like five, four seconds. Four, right. three, Manta. two, one. Manta. Oof, wrong. It's Ma uh, Maelstrom. Jesus Christ. Moonshard. Sorry. <laughs> Moonshard. He goes, Moonshard. He literally goes Maelstrom, Moonshard, Dragon Lance into then Manta and stuff after. Yeah. Well, this is his pub. I was hoping low key that no one. Mate, you've had a juice like a real good lane. Your, your game's looking good. Do you want to be greedy and copy Shiro? No. He's he's trying to play the mid game. He's trying to actually get to D Division 1, so going for the Dragon Lance straight away after that Maelstrom. Yeah, we actually saw like quite a lot of that in pubs after Muerta got buffed. Um, well, they, she got um, most of her spells got nerfed, but they buffed the damage on Pierce the Veil quite a lot. And then everyone just started building Moonshards. They were just like, first they went then uh, Mjolnir, and then they're like, screw it, we're going for Moonshard. We, we just want all the attack damage to get off that damage inside the ultimate. So yeah, it's... Uh... It's a play, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> you're gonna not something you're gonna get away with in this kind of match, but no one showing a bit of respect as old G moving down to the bottom side of the map. Thompson and Seb, a timeless What's combination. Up, They're trying to find oh, no yeah. one right now. Mirror plays Tracks on the map. Tracks to the left hand side, so he's not gonna be able to break it. There aren't any wards here either. Scary times. Look at this kid track's position where he thinks he's going to break it, but he's not. Yeah. No one's going to win now. Yeah, and uh, now, well, immediate ulti ultimate coming out from him, but they're just going to go in and duel it. Eh, screw it, why not? And uh, that's going to waste the ultimate from no one, but they're just going to be able to turn around and kill them. Zibbe once again, Aramis comes in with a big disruption, keeping no one alive and getting them the return kill. Merlin just has to back himself away. Thompson still chasing for now, but likely won't be able to catch him. Merlin will leave, although they do see him. And the fear Ooh, is there from canceled. downtown. Okay. No one catching him out. Merlin, I mean, he's still got a leap charge to work with as well, and, so. And no one has detection, so they just walk it off. Yep. Does he want to give away they the ward? I'm faking these, yeah. They, they want to know, I no, think. Seb's going. Yeah, they want to know if, if where he is and if he's got a ward up there, so. Kind of makes sense. As uh, the roar comes out on the bottom side of the map, Seb's getting jumped on us on the other side of the portal. <laughs> Merlin, once again, is playing the great escape, but I feel like his time of escaping might be over. I think he's been caught and back to jail with you, sir. Goodbye, princess. 
I just need to double check, but I'm... Oh, wait, hold on a second. Huh? Big fight? There is a pretty big fight, yeah. Jimmy has come in for this one, and uh, I'm not too sure why. He's kind of in no man's land, but in comes the cavalry, running through that portal, looking to help out their Legion commander. And Jimmy actually seemingly able to locate Kitrek with the uh, overwhelming odds there, but not able to connect. They seem to be having a catch problem here on ITB. Yeah, a, a little bit. It really does boil down to dual arrow or blast off. They're like the big three. You can kind of lean on slight chains in the early game, but it's a lot of like soft control and kind of tempo based control, which I guess actually I've not really mentioned that, but or like thought about it that way. But yeah, they have tempo based control. They, if the game goes super late, they lean on items. Like there's never a point where it's like, okay, hit this spell, they're always going to die, right? So outside of, of course, Legion. Um, and you can kind of see they're trying to utilize that with their positioning, how they're grouping up. Whilst uh, OG, they are, they're kind of playing in pairs. They're not looking for these big kills. It's survive long enough that if they do go on us as four or five, we're not split on the map. We're not starving our XP, sorry. And then we can TP in and save the gank, right? Yeah. Because OG, they do have a lot of like save potential. Some boundless strike, some edge hills, edge creep saves potentially. Disruptions that we saw in the previous fight. Yeah, it's, it's all been Aramis so far. I mean, he, he's been my MVP by quite a margin so far on this game. Um, getting like two or three crucial, crucial turnarounds with this disruption. Seb. Oh, 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 oh. Did he? Did he actually play the tree line there? Uh, he just... Did Nande no, not actually, find him? I, I didn't talk on my fog personally. Yeah. I don't think Nande saw him. He, Nande would have instantly gone on him. Yeah. He actually... Him. I think that was some pretty tasty jukes coming out from Seb there, so well done. Good stuff. Kind of waiting to see when the Legion's going to be able to pop off in this game. I feel like his role isn't going to be the classic who shouldn't be dying here in the mid. Yeah, nice. Yep. I feel like his role won't be the jewel the big core get the kill just because of SD. He's going to be the type of guy that goes like Shadow Blade with Blink Blade Mail waits for the SD to waste a spell or show his position, and then boom, duel him instead. And that's where you're going to really need Ember and Morphling to just break open the fights, jump in between everything, try and just soak up some damage. And then once you kill SD, that's when the fight goes well. And I think that's why we don't see ITB doing, being too crazy right now. It's because they are waiting for that Blink Dagger, which is relatively close. It's like 500 gold away. All right, so is that, is that like the play point then? Is that when we're going to see them smoking up and making a move on OG? Yeah, uh, no, for ITB, that's when they'll be smoking up. Yeah, yeah. The Blink Blade Mold, that's where they go. For old G, they go now. Like, why not? You've, you've got everything. Well, they are besieging this top tier one. ITB, they, they are assembling the knights, but they're not going to get here in time to at least to save the tower. There's a whole menagerie out here from uh, the side of old G. Yes, please. Fight for all. What, how many skeletons are there? There's six skeletons, one Ogre Frost Mage, a Hawk. Uh, one Dark Troll Summoner, two boars. <laughs> it's a really this shit dinner. <laughs> kind of sounds like uh, the the twelve days of Christmas, Dota. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and and Seb is the partridge in the pear tree. He is indeed. Well, um, they just kind of ran at this tower, five man the tower down, and just kind of ran away again. And for the most part, that seemed successful. ITB kind of responded to it, and then LG ran away. And then you know, does this feel kind of um? I don't know, sloppy for you, for ITB, you know, kind of bringing all these heroes up here, either respond to it or don't, right? I feel like with OG showing that many heroes in the top offlane tier one at nighttime, it kind of shows going Roshan, right? You see that already with their positioning. Ah, uh, okay. So I feel like it might look awkward for ITB, but I think their call is, guys, don't defend the tower. Let's position smoke up, be ready to at least respect the potential Roshan, because if Legion gets the Blink Dagger, I think they could contest. Without Blink Dagger, oh, it's, it's going to be hard. It's so it's awkward, already, though, because, yeah. I right, look outside the pit. Die, um, OG, they already have a Dio Observer kind of just south next to the Lotus Orb area, so they're going to see that initiation in. But yeah, ITB, they are smoked up. None they actually shows on the creep wave wow. from smoke, so... OG are well aware that ITB want to fight right now. Yep, yep. And, uh, you know, they're, they're in the trees right now. Arrow's going to cut on through. Doesn't quite connect onto Topsum. They do see Kit Track with that arrow. A lot of patience coming out from both teams here. No one wants to pull that trigger just yet. What are both teams looking for? What's the opening here? I mean, I feel like for SD. If SD ever shows his hand, that's when it's going to get difficult. It's why he's hu hugging inside the pit right now. He does want to get seen by a random rogue ward. 
He's so far back. <laughs> Aramis knows how important he is. Ooh, just a couple more spells. I mean, that is a long one. The cooling, um, 30 second cooldown, by the way. So Ooh, nice little fear out from no one there. And another one bouncing on through. That one does actually miss as uh, the trading turns into a little bit more than that. But once again, Supreme back in a way, low. Supreme. He's got to be careful here. Thompson's going to cancel out the TP. Can they finish him off as a question? And the answer does seem to be yes. yes. He can't escape. Didn't get off any of his abilities there somehow. Doesn't have a buyback either to get back on that remnant. So, old G. They do have to still respect that possibility, but no one says no thank you. <laughs> he has take a ton of damage though from that blade mail. Just again, just click on the Legion right now. He's like 15 gold away from Blink. This entire setup has been Legion, oh, not with his no. Blink dagger. They find the techies as well, and Merlin, it looks like they're gonna have to pull the plug on this one. Blink dagger finally purchased from Jibe, but is it too little, too late? Okay, Ember has a remnant out, so he's gonna respawn. You kinda want ITB. Okay, it expired. <laughs> Uh, he went for it. He had two out, actually, so he went oh, for he had two? slightly okay, closer one, so he is back in the fight, but... Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Thompson, gonna take a pretty long arrow here, but again, Aramis sitting, racing behind him here, and they're trying to snipe Nande with a rogue dead shot. God, there's so many of these dead shots coming out. It feels like it's on a five-second cooldown. They're just chipping them. Like, ITB, they can't get into the middle of the fight. They just don't have that initiation. Oh my god, that's a lot of damage. There They're going to jump in one kill, not going for the second though, as Aramis comes through with a disruption, but he's dead the moment he comes out the other side. Merlin and Supreme both put to sleep here as ITB looking for top. So Nande and Jibe on the chase immediately just jump in on him with that adapter strike, stopping him from getting up to a tree. But Topson, he's got off cooldown, gets up to another one, and ITB are left stranded in that river. They get the big kill onto no one, but they do also lose Supreme once again, who is struggling so much on this Ember Spirit. Just think about the amount of resources ITP used. I think they lost they lost two observers in the top side of the fight. The sea of sentries that you can see outside Roshan right now, very much favoring old G. I think mean, there's only one import yeah, like the vision game from this like stalemate stalemate at Roshan is incredible. I think OG played that really nicely. It was pressure them there. They, they didn't see the blink dagger. If anything, you could say that ITB probably should have let Jibe sit back hit the jungle, get the blink dagger, and then join the fight a little bit later because throwing out some rogue arrows, some techies, mines, like you can at least get information to then go for the bigger play. But yeah, ITB, they rushed it a little and weren't able to kind of capitalize on it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you definitely felt them. that as well. Like they, I don't know, they, they, they just eventually just went for it. And now, <laughs> oh gee, they were set up for the daytime rush. And uh, once again, ITB just, just a little bit behind or, or are they just out of resources to take this fight? I'd feel like out of resources and out of confidence of the engagement. I, the, the way that Supreme played that fight, it was he dies, doesn't feel too great. He enters the fight again, but it's always kind of on a retreating mindset. And I feel like if you are ITB, in the back of your mind, it's like, okay, guys, one more item, then we can break them. The issue there is the active nature of this Monkey King. He's now got a Manta. Suddenly he buys the Radiance. He goes the Topson style of just nuisance and they're gonna just scale really hard. So ITB need, need to be careful. Like they don't really have the best triple scaling cores. Like Morphling Ember, of course do, but when I look at this Legion, he easily can fall behind in games if you're not getting that dual damage. Only yeah. 10 to his name so far. Yeah, it's, it's not ideal. It's not ideal. Ship A, not having a good game. Struggling to uh, really get into it. And uh, Supreme after the last couple of deaths has uh, kind of joined him in the struggle zone as well, so. Yeah, ITB, we're only with one real farm core to work around, but uh, Nade is certainly that. I mean, he, he is huge, you know, um, didn't get caught out the Incredible. same amount as uh, no one has. Just, yeah, extremely clean morphling performance, but is it enough with his team? That is the question. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know what the win probability is right now, but I'd probably say it's like 70% to old G. I round that mark, like 72%, 73%, that's my guess. And I feel like for ITB, the way that they can make that grow, or at least to be more favorable, they are going to lean on that surprise factor. When Aegis is out, if they hit the jewel, what is it? Oh, it's 62. Ooh. 62, so. All right, all right, fair play. It's like the jewel into Blastoff and Moran, like they have a lot of single target explosive damage. So in the in the random moment where Aramis positioning is poor, Ember sits on top of him, they jewel another guy, get the kill. Like, I can see ITB always having the potential comeback in their draft. Like, this isn't going to be a type of game where it's like, ah, well, it's just over. Like, they're always going to have that X factor with their heroes they have. It's just a 
about setting up the fight with the vision, with the execution to get everything, the symphony of spells to be perfect. And for OG, it is just to continue being kind of that ball of damage and death just running around and trying to just poke them at any opportunity they can. Like this net worth lead, it, it hasn't really scaled for, for either team in this game. Ooh, no one. Pulling the trigger there a little bit, but uh, yeah. No team to really back him up. I mean, you need a bit more than a silence and even a fear. Wouldn't be enough to bring down Chibi at this point, I don't think. I mean, may maybe with a Pierce of Ale, but uh, I hear it does melt to Pierce of Ale. We saw it in the last fight as well, right? Or the last big fight. No one kind of did disappear, right? With the with the jewel pre-Pierce, he can die. Also, yeah, that's true as well. Blade active. He can kind of kill himself. Doesn't matter if the Legion doesn't do the right-clicking. The, the Murta can kind of do the right-clicking herself. Yeah, it's no just... positioning will be key. It's this very weird sort of uh, dual situation here where both of the carries can actually die pretty easily to each other. But uh, now go on to the Seb. This is a very nice catch from the side of ITB. They do need to finish the job, but they will be able to do so. On Aramis, well. said, Aramis on the side. This is a plus one we weren't expecting, but Aramis getting caught out. There's going to be another kill going their way. And a, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah Aramis is goal. Them, Big dual yeah. damage. <laughs> <laughs> He's now got 30. He went from 10 to 30. No one can stop this man. He is unhinged now. I always love the uh, description of duel, you know, to face a soldier of Stonehall in single combat is a challenge for you can resist. Yes, because duel is always single combat, <laughs> always a one-on-one. -on -one. It's very, that's actually weird. It's very unfair. It's normally it's just one guy and then like his crew just punching one poor person who's been thrown into an arena they don't really want to be in. <laughs> oh, well. But for OG, yeah, they, a, a, slow, a small lapse of positioning, right? You've got just running through the river, kind of regrouping together and doing it. ITB perfectly just find that window of opportunity. And they can continue doing this, right? I feel like for it's like SD out of position, team out of position, game can get pretty awkward. So, quick little tormentor. And, oh gee, it looks like they're not really going to be able to do much with this Aegis either. I don't know, when Sage expires, are you kind of starting to believe in ITB? I'm believing in the team that sets up the fight better. I don't think either team is in a perfectly, we should fully win the game outright moment where I think other teams, often at the 24 minute mark, have some incredible lead. Nande, gotta be careful, he does get caught out by the fear. Did he get off the strength morph? He does just about get it in time and backs himself away. A lot of shots being fired here from Ulti. Nande, he's gotta be careful. I mean, that Muerta, she doesn't mess around and she's got an Aegis as well, so can't even be bought down, at least not permanently. ITB regrouping here, considering what they wanna do. And Nande says, oh, I'll farm a camp. It seems like 18 the, seconds uh... on Aegis. <laughs> the right move. Yeah, it is going down soon. And Ulti, they need to be respectful of that. No one can die as we've seen before. Chibe is ready and waiting with that duel. It's all about Aramis. Where is he? Can they catch him out? No one actually. Currently in the fog right now. High ground vision advantage for OG, but there's actually a radiant ward behind them, so they fully see where Aramis is. Yeah. Can they make that catch though? They're just trying to like threaten no one and see if they can poke Aramis into coming forwards here. All right. Well, a little bit of overcommitment here from the supports of ITB actually, but uh, no one. Now they're gonna jump on it. The duel comes out as well. The roar. It's not gonna save him. Down goes no one. ITB. They get the big kill they were looking for. Well, that's another way to do it. Just force yeah. out the disruption, wait it out, and then go anyway. They've got so many spells to throw at him. This ward is so clutch from Merlin. The one that's just. Just to the right of this uh, high realm ward spot. This is pretty much winning the fight. It got so much vision. It saw the SD move south. It saw the Monkey King move south. As soon as he saw that Wukong, it's like, wait a second. Murta is a screen's distance away from his team. Like, this is just an easy go. Even if Disrupt's in plane, like, they're just committing elsewhere. So, yeah, this ward was incredible for ITB. And they, they, they started playing the fights how they want to, right? It's poke with the important cause. Don't get too excited to try and throw bodies. Don't just go for that wild duel for no reason. It was kind of a very slow, methodical, just poke and prod. And yeah, I think both teams can do this with their drafts really well, but it's about vision and the positioning. And ITB in this time, they are the, the aggressors. They are the ones who are able to utilize it a little bit better. But still, no major net worth lead. 14 for 14, 1K lead to ITB. All cause bang on even other than Nande who's kind of slowly growing ahead now. 3,000 above the Muerta.
Yeah, it's a, it's a close game, you know. I was, I was hoping for a close series here. I wasn't quite sure what we would get. I was actually leaning ITB's way because I, I, I know that ITB did plan on boot camping. They said in an announcement that they were going to, uh, but it doesn't look like they've been able to at least all make it out there. So, OG, they are boot camping, and I, they, you know, I always think that's such a big advantage. And they can't make it out there as well. Not all of them are there, so that's they're true. equally awkwardly boot camping. <laughs> it's, it's a Division Two boot camp. The semi boot camp. Yes. The sandal camp. A region. Well, 14 and 14, no real net, world, net worth advantage. I mean, it all comes down to the next Roshan, I guess. That is the, uh, that is the usual make or break point of these kind of games. Wait, is Legion going for the 30 minute pipe? All right. Hmm. He is. He really is just looking at this game and going, you know what, Muerta, I just want to, I want to mitigate that one little bit of damage. And we haven't really mentioned it too much, but this. Uh, press the attack also pretty helpful right when you think about Beastmaster the boundless strike OG themselves don't really have incredible stunts so if Jibei's in a defensive position throwing out some pipe throwing out some clutch press the attacks to dispel these big stuns or these limited stuns that OG have he can really unlock this game for them and we saw it in that previous fight and both teams now trying to posture for the tier threes who can force who back first or we could see the world's first just trade racks at 28 minutes. <laughs> I'm here Don't for it. I mean, happen. yeah, there is backdoor production on this uh, bottom tower, but now the creeps come in and yeah, I mean, Nande is showing no signs of stopping. Ulti is showing no signs of stopping. They, they kind of catch out Supreme, but they don't have the commitment here. But yeah, down goes one later back to the top side. Uh, no one has come back though, and he's firing off some spells. Actually cancels out a uh, TP with his uh, dead shot there. I don't even know if that was Libra, but Nande's sticking around. He wants to finish the job. He didn't come for half our barracks. He's going for the full damn thing. And he's going to get it. Satanic used pretty early on here just to heal himself up. No, going for the melee, but no. Okay. Oh, Jimmy in the bottom. He's in the bottom lane. What the hell? Jimmy's jumping. Vision, 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 vision. They don't have their more flick. Do they need him? They I mean, don't have any wards. You know, like they probably do. Jimmy's just going <laughs> to get blown up, rubbed into the face, and just gets it clean taken off. Nande's in, though. He has come back into the fray, and he's looking for Dobson right now. And comes the adapter strike to control him up. Can they finish the Monkey King? Yes, they can. And uh, Kid Track just says, see you later. So. It is the old half rack trade. <laughs> oh god! I'm so confused. So so much about that whole series of events oh, was so beautiful. No, I've got no complaints. You got both teams just trying to really force the. Go on, you want to defend yourselves, but with a beastmaster lineup, they're never going to be the ones who are going to go back first. They can always push with a little bit more, and it's why you see the melee rats taken for OG and ITB only able to take the, you know, the the range to themselves. So, they're technically advantage old g but again this game is so incredibly close no team has really been able to build a lead no team has a firm grip on the map and where they want to play it's a lot of sweeping actions and just waiting to find who's out in no man's land but nandy he has the satanic he is rather tanky if he is able to get those kicks off yep that's true Ooh, <laughs> these two teams like just think about it right you got old g like to be it's not as if they're dead, you know, but they just see Morphling and they're just going on him. Like, Topson's just in the top. He's off farming in Narnia. Like, he's nowhere near and they're still trying to go for the fight. Well, I mean, the thing about Narnia is that you can always get there through a little uh, cupboard and he does have that TP if things go real south. Yeah. I mean, the Twin Gate is That's... Narnia's cupboard, I guess, but yeah, he's... What's he got? Oof. God, Manta and Radiance. <laughs> it's a build. Four, three, it is a build. It's, it's going to be obnoxious. Lanes are going to get pushed in, but now we get to see the second Roshan of the game. Mm. OG got the first one. Can they now contest the second one? Surely, right? Surely. Respect is coming forward, offering himself up as a tasty bit of bait here. And the first line of defense as they will now come charging on through. Take a lot of damage, though, from the Ember Spirit, to be honest. Those slider fists doing a lot of work and just kind of forcing them back. The Roshan, it's Big low. Wukong. Thompson, he's going to pop the ultimate now and try to force back. Jimmy just has to run. It's Kid Track, who's gone down as well as Respect at the moment. No one just trying to stand his ground here and lay the damage out onto Nande. But Nande happy just back himself away. Oh, no, that's a big arrow no onto no one. Can they follow up with the damage? The ultimate. It ends and he goes down. Stun out onto Seb as well. Seb gets up the roar, but it does absolutely nothing. He's going to be the next one to die. Down goes Aramis. Ages, well. the Ages, Ages low. Thompson jumps in and is actually able to kill off Roshan and get the Ages for himself. So he denies it. No, he gets a jump. no, 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 no. You don't get away with it. And this. the matter as well. No way. He can't keep getting away with it. You cheeky devil. Oh, look at him. Absolute tasty escape. 
Oh my goodness. Just when the tips came out, Tigo, just as the tip mm. came out, you take your finger off the mouse for just one second and uh, you get punished. I feel like for OG, they are getting uncomfortable now at this point in the game. The, the inability for no one to convert his damage into the fight whilst everyone on ITB is just kind of pumping out. Like, yeah, look at Murta, 2480 that was. Really not able to, yeah, not able to stand her ground with that ultimate compared to the fluid nature of both Morphling and Ember, how they can just get to any part. It really is just a, a display of movement being the key aspect here. Like OG, they initiate the fight a little bit with this poke, but I just love how ITB, they disengage to the south. They give themselves a position to go, okay, where are, where is everyone? And unfortunately for Thompson here, he just kind of Wukong's, it looks hype, but there's no follow-up. There's no containment to that yeah. Wukong's. And yeah. ITB just keep moving as a huddle, like, all right, we're on the south side, to the north side, and now look at Muerta. Poor little no one, just all by himself and deleted in like two and a half seconds, if that. How does Thompson get this? He's just he's just sitting in the pit, just hammering away uh, so at Rage Down. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to... I'm just going to take this. His on cooldown. All right, okay, let's look at it. So his mantle was on cooldown for five seconds, up in two seconds. Instant spring, because that's, of course, a Monkey King thing. Yikes. Dispels that, jumps away, and off he goes. So, yeah, it's there wasn't anything really stopping his spring off the get-go. If you're spamming it quick enough, it needs to be like a like a remnant or something to, to lock him down. But there was no hard stun or hard thing controlling him, so he was able to quickly get out in a millisecond of time so yeah fair play to Dobson absolutely incredible escape and we will probably be talking about that Aegis still if OG are able to win this game because a morphling with Aegis at this point in the game I'd, I'd argue it's probably over like that 60% win rate uh win possibility that we saw for OG would have been deleted like morphling would have just been an absolute machine yeah, no, for real. Um, there was, there's not much. I mean, we've seen it. They, they haven't been able to do anything about Nando this game. He is uh, four zero and five, playing an immaculate performance on this morphling. And you know, if it's uh, okay, stop doing some troubleshooting. Um, if if it does come down to um, can you kill the morphling or not? You know, maybe you can do it once if you use absolutely everything, but twice, not a chance. So, yeah, this is huge. <laughs> Probably do <Hey>, it. <laughs> Radiance. Yep. Yeah. It, uh, let's just play in Topson and his egregious build. Let's let's go for that one. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, no acronyms though. Disappointingly, that's that's the uh, the classic. Okay, just, just to give context to the build, right? Like if you just look at the minimap and the gameplay, it's always sending out illusions to to mid lane. It's having his hero in another lane. So with this build, he is able to deal with two lanes by himself, which then gives you indirect information because creeps start hitting towers. You know where they're positioned. Um, you could argue at this point in the game, a team will naturally be as five barreling down the lane, looking to try and, you know, get something important, AKA bottom tier three slash racks. But I can see how this build can enable fluid gameplay, but it, it's, a, it's a bit difficult at this point. Nande, he is in deep here. I mean, he's gonna get disrupted. He's got the cheese available, ready to go, should he need it. I mean, he's, he is just, you want to disrupt me, boy? You want to disrupt me? Kitrak as well. Yeah, that's untouchable. Not doing a whole lot here. Kitrak is looking very, very touchable. And Nande is going to do exactly that. Now no one jumping in. Trying to commit to the fight here. Trying to bring down Nande. Seb, trying to get off the rule. Is able to there do it so. Is. Thompson, there it is. He's on top of them as well. And they will bring him down. The Morphling can die in Seb. There it is. You asked for it. Nice little fear as well to catch out the plus one. Making it three huge kills here for all the side of old G. They sacrificed their supports, but for the greater good. Like, there was no major control from OG. I was like, okay, there's a roar, surely. At some point, it's going to... And then, boom, it hits and Supreme. He jumps on in, and he just jumps into the middle of the calling. He gets silenced. Oh, and then he just no. insta-dies. Morphling, of course, inside roar blows up as well. So, <laughs> for OG, like, this is how... Now they've won this fight in this fashion, in their minds. Okay, if we fight, it needs to be raw Morphling everyone pump everything in and then hope that we've somehow put legion in a different position it's it will be incredibly difficult to replicate that fight due to the fact that it was nande diving tier threes which simplified the initiation <laughs> right but yep it is giving og a glimmer of hope and 21 for 21 35 minutes in what an incredibly even back and forth game and if he was doing that with ages we'd have been like hey go for it buddy oh with ages it's, it's over that's the you play know? yeah yeah, they're vibing. They're vibeless right now. 
Alright, no one really wanted that arrow. And uh, Supreme, hello sir, that is uh, pretty aggressive. Still no purges on the side of Supreme, by the way. He's, he's got no nothing. So if he does get when caught out by the side... Blinders start casting? Hello, sir. <laughs> Hello, sir. It's, it's... You shouldn't be there, mate. Yeah, we have to resist that, that. Otherwise, we are going to go full grit, and no one's going to enjoy yeah. that. Oh, Monkey King on the back lines, looking for the target. They are going to be able to lock down Jibbe here with the raw, but a little full stuff away. Jibbe, pretty damn tanky, but not tanky enough. Still does fall. Thompson, also got to be a little bit careful as Merlin. Oh, doesn't quite get the invis off in time. The fade time, too damn long. And that means Kid Track is going to be able to grab that kill. ITB, they're coming to the pressure there. They're not holding that line that they've utilized in the last 15 or so minutes to give themselves that advantage. Kind of throwing bodies out into, into the wild. Yeah, the wall is starting to crumble just a little bit here. And well, in goes respect. The buyback's gonna come out from Jibby as well. They wanna try and commit here. They're gonna try and bring down Trit Chat straight off the bat and no one's gonna fall as well. My goodness, they do have the damage. The duels out onto the Monkey King as well. Thompson in some trouble. Although, I mean, he is just gonna absolutely yes, rinse Jibby in the 1v1. And now they're gonna be over towards Supreme as well. Oh, geez, they're not done with this, Nande. Gotta be a little bit careful. Does have the cheese Thompson's to play so around tanky. with here though. So he's kind of happy to do a little bit of poking and prodding. And there comes that cheese. Thompson is going to kind of uh, smack all the spells into him. They have the roar out. They have the roar out. They have the roar. Whoa. Uh huh? Whoa. He had a strength ball, but he didn't use it. Uh. Okay. He had a lot of things available when he didn't use it. All right. Let's just. All right. So this is where Thompson's build comes online. All right. When you get that satanic. And then you've got two dispels in the form of Manta plus Satanic plus the Radiance Mischance always applying. It might take 35 minutes to get there, but my golly gosh, when he gets there, it's, <laughs> it's going to do work. And that is, I think, the saving grace. It's something that we didn't really, I guess, think about or cover too much is when you have Topson going for this style of build, the resources required to kill off the Muerta suddenly give more kind of access to the fight for Topson, right? Because suddenly Jewel's used or Morphin's waveformed into a different position of the fight, so now he doesn't have that mobility available. Um, but no, it's ITB. I've said this so many times, but both teams, if you don't respect the positioning and the vision needed in this game with both drafts to win, you are just going to crumble. Both teams will be able to destroy your base of ease. And, yeah. Oh, gee, they are the, the victors in this one. Two racks up now. Yeah, yes, I uh, gotta be feeling pretty damn good for get this turnaround, especially when the odds look so stacked against them, you know that? Oh, they killed the Shivas! <laughs> Supreme's not gonna have Shivas now. Oh, that is pretty man. pretty rough. Meanwhile, Beastmaster picks up a Hex, so this net worth it is gonna feel honestly way bigger, like 11, 12k right now, just because of that item disappearance. Yep, it's just lost to the Void now. There he is. They, uh, they hold on to items when they die. Buried with their stash. Mate, it got lost to the Enchantress. There isn't a void in this game. Don't know what you're about. All right, you. All right, you. Oh, gee. I mean, do they try and push this now? Oh, my God. That is a, that is a high-resolution spear on my screen. <laughs> I think you you got to wait for the Pierce of the Veil to be back up. Uh, for the for the murder. Also, Amaris is about to complete the Agonims, which will provide him additional charges uh, with his uh, purge and apply a break. So it's going to help out a little bit and be quite a nuisance towards the side of ITB. Do you to bother? Some would say. Now, ITB don't really get to make many plays at the moment. All they can do is kind of leak out onto the map, ooze onto the map, you could say and try and claim out a little bit of land. But in terms of actually going out and getting things done, it's tricky. It feels like this type of game where you really want like ninja gear on your Legion commander. Like tier fours are available. If they can just get one on him and now suddenly from a smoked position, he's dispelling people, applying the pipe, then initiating with his own blink BKB. I think that will give just peace of mind to Jibe where in the current fights, it's as soon as he uses that blink incorrectly, he's getting collapsed on. He's getting battered through the BKB. He isn't really surviving. So I think some Shadow Blades, some uh, bye bye Marana. options will be key. Yeah. Yeah. Any support that shows on the map is just going to get deleted. Every time I click on uh, Topson, just a new item's forming, right? He's now got a Scardi. He's oh. a quarter of the way to a Lincoln's. He is... Neat. Or is dead. <laughs> oh, oh, he got the ninja gear! He got the ninja gear on Legion! Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. The small steps are occurring. Yep. Tigov asks and... Uh... 
The Gaben right. delivers. All right, players in Division 2. PayPal, it's just T Governor. $5, I'll get you your new neutral. items that you want. You want a Philly? $2.50. Respect. Not asking much, right? In a bit of trouble, as you say. Any support on the map is going to get. Oh, it's a gem pad as well. Oh, dear. Oh, oh dear, yes. Bother. Well. Yeah, the noose really starting to tighten now for ITB. How much can Nande Morphling do? Well, not quite enough seems to be the story here. Does have yeah. a rapier queued up. Now, he already has a chrysalis as the option to buy a Daedalus. I, I imagine it's just when Olgi push high ground. If he doesn't have a chance to buy the rapier, he's going to buy the Daedalus. If they don't push high ground quickly enough, then he will be able to buy out the full rapier, would be my assumption. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably go down that line as well. And yeah, I think for ITB, this is the type of game where the Roshan still, Monkey King gets it. Suddenly that's a swing in their favor. The, the Nande confidence dive on the tier threes where he just kind of feeds away his life and kills off his Ember. And in these are two pivotal moments for ITB. They were in a commanding position in this game. After the early game onslaught of OG, surviving that first Aegis, they put themselves in such a good position and yeah, a clutch play from OG, overconfidence in the next play from ITB. Now third Roshan just goes to OG and it is a completely different game. Win percentage was like 80% we just saw on the screen as well. Yeah, I'm just looking at like the big ticket items yeah, that I'm seeing 86. getting picked up and you've got a, a Satanic as well on the Murta. Lincoln soon that I mentioned already for Thompson, like everyone is getting so big. Well, um, yeah, and these are heroes as well, which which can just kind of scale very, very nicely through the game. You know, obviously the Monkey okay. King and Murta are huge, but all right, no man. First time I get to say this in the division. Smoke on smoke action occurring 42 minutes in. 18,000 gold into OG. Yeah, Thompson's going to be the one to just immediately pop down that ultimate. And it's instantly looking towards Jibbe. Jibbe is able to just leave the circle, which is pretty nice. Supreme also able to get themselves out, but it's a full retreat and the ultimates come out from the side of Aramis here, trying to slow them down, trying to get the catch. Respect. Still moving around here. I mean, they want to try and look for the jump here. They're going to go onto the tops of Monkey King, and I think they might be able to take him out. They absolutely will. Why? Because Nande went on the back line, and he got caught out by no one, tried to go for the big fight, and didn't quite get what he was after. Arrow does actually connect here onto no one, but this guy's got Nages. He doesn't give a damn. Seb, he's happy to just kind of fight up into these guys right now. Supreme desperately trying to take him down, but Aramis is there once again with the disruption. He's losing health on this um, Ember Spirit, and he is indeed going to go down the once. He does have the buyback, but cooldowns are going to be lacking for this Ember Spirit, at least for the time being. Spears being thrown out towards Jibbe. Jibbe, he's running, but he's running the wrong way. And dead shot, not quite connecting. The poison, not quite connecting. All right, disruption should make this easier, but Supreme comes in. Wants to try and save him. They want to keep on fighting into this. I mean, they don't have their Morphling, and now they don't have the Legion Commander either, as he does go down. Supreme just trying to get off these slides from the high the ground. They're letting him get away with it. The techies getting off decent damage here. I mean, they're going to be able to come in, but the Hex is out onto the atmosphere, and the roar comes through as well. The damage is there to take him down, and it's no one with the double kill. Old G likely taking the game here. Oh, Kit Track lost his uh, Talisman of Evasion. He was trying to buy a Halberd mid team fight and it just dropped to the ground. <laughs> Click on the Enchantress right now. He's got an absolute, you know, buffet of items in his inventory on the Enchantress. <laughs> yeah, look at this. And he buys the Talisman. And so Supreme, as he's dying, he runs on over and he's like, This is my Talisman now. You might win the game, but you don't have a Halberd for the scoreboard. Yeah. Everyone will laugh at you and say, Why has this guy got a Sanj? What a fool. Yeah, it's just in, it's in radio oh. base now, just chilling. They want to take this one though. I mean, they do have one more buyback for it. It's going to be Jibbe, so they're going to be able to the Muerta, but uh, Khan's the Disarm's coming out. Morphling looking for the entry here, and they're going to go for the duel. They managed to catch out the Muerta. They need the damage, they need the damage, and they are going to find it. Down goes Aegis, the though. one life on the Muerta. Can they do anything for life number two? The fear comes out perfectly from Nande, but the ultimate's there. Pierce the Veil coming out from Muerta. Can she fight up into this? They're backing out on the side of ITP. Jibbe getting so low. No one forcing forwards, going for the big balls plays. They could be able to take down one of the Royals there onto Nande. Nande to full, and the game is theirs. Oh, gee will be able to take it in the end. It takes them 45 minutes, but through some very, very creative and clutch plays, old G take game one. I just love the fact that it was so close the entire time.